give us a picture of how your holidays in the past would have gone or have gone. Sure. There's always just a concern about one or multiple get togethers, celebrations in December, especially with my birthday being December 12th. It turns into basically a month of concern about eating out and not being able to celebrate and get in the spirit because there was more so of a concern of how much weight am I going to gain? How many events is this? If what can I cancel? Um, just a whole myriad of weird concerns that don't allow you to celebrate a special time of year. The focus is not on family and friends. The focus is on weight gain. So it just goes into a whole spiral of what can I cancel? What can I go to? How much weight am I going to gain? Just all negative self-talk um, that basically deflate the holidays. So with the holidays, like Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, back to back, like you said, and then your birthday, all the December birthdays, it just felt really stressful. Like knowing that you're going to gain weight from eating out because you're making the decision to eat out, like you're not going to skip all of that. But so your mindset has shifted to now where you texted me and you were like, I know I'm going to gain weight, but I'm completely yeah. okay with it. Like, I'm still happy. I'm focusing on the event, the experience. So how did that mindset shift kind of happen? I think I've just totally reprioritized something that you said to me at the beginning. I think it might've been when I had COVID, something about like, you have to be kind to yourself and self-care, which the biggest component of all of our work together has been self-care. That's been number one. Mm -hmm. And without, I mean, I was a 48 year old woman with, zero self-care, um, which I think is very conditioned um, into a working mom and it's very misogynist. I just think that is the way that people my age, women my age were raised to have very low to no self-care, very low coping skills that you go to work, you take care of your kids, et cetera, no breaks, like a race. So something that you said early on about self-care just allowed me to really reprioritize and weigh out what my goals were. So number one is if my head is not right, nothing else will be right. Mm -hmm. And I'm much happier. Like the change in happiness has been exponential. Yay. That makes me really happy to hear. Yeah. So, yeah. So Karen last year would have been like maybe hating on yourself a little bit, um, trying to get your weight under control, like freaking out. And Karen this year is like, I have the skills necessary. I have the habits to deal with this. It's not out of control. And I like how you said the dual approach of like, okay, I know my weight's going, going to go up a little bit and I'm okay with it, but I'm letting that remind me, hey, now it's time to reel it back in. So yeah, yeah you didn't lose control of everything. Like it wasn't all or nothing. No, it's a dual approach. Yeah. You know, mental health, allowing the scale to fluctuate. That has to be there and enjoy life. Yeah. versus, uh, you know, I've lost X amount of weight at, you know, this can come back on. So this needs to, you know, be tapered and measured. So it's like, a, I really do feel like this dual approach has been very helpful. Okay. And then last question, what are the three biggest habits that we've worked on or that you've worked on that have made this change possible? Sure. Definitely. Number one would be, as I said, like um, self-care coping skills. That's far number one. Two is weighing in daily and always doing that. In the past, I would play games with the scale where, um, you know, I wouldn't weigh in for, let's say, four or six weeks and you come back and it's, you know, eight, 10 pounds because I didn't want to deal with what was going on because I was so concerned about what was on the scale. And there was so much negative emotion equated to a number on a scale mm -hmm. that was definite. And then number three is always coming back to exercise and eating right within, you know, it might not be hardcore every day or tracked every day, but having those knowing what to do. So let's say I'm, you know, not on track for a couple of days. My exercise is always consistent, eating a little less consistent, um, always coming back to what I know works. And it's interesting to see now that if I come back to, you know, what I know, 
the, you know, the couple of pounds, whatnot, which I'm not super concerned about, do, do fall off. Mm -hmm. I think the bigger concern is learning how you should eat. I mean, when we started working together, not to ADHD out, but when we started working together, I was so off track. I had no clue what was going on. I didn't know what a macro was, which I'm still laughing about. Um, you know, my diet was 800 calories some days, other days, I think it could spiral up to probably 3000 calories a day. Mm -hmm. I had no clue what, what, what I was eating and how much I was eating and how bad some of this was. And then lots of just conditioned behavior of starving yourself and head games. So I just return. I think this, the reason I've been successful is I always return back to the habits that we put in place over the last year. And what you said to me was a couple of days off, which really resonated a couple of days off for the holidays does not off track, you know, everything that we've been doing here and it always back, which I, I feel good about that. And then I always return to it. Otherwise, like I wouldn't be on the scale right now. I probably wouldn't be exercising, probably lots of head games and food games, et cetera. So this mm -hmm. has definitely been the, the right place to be. Awesome. Well, there you have it, folks.